Anybody know what I've just drawn on the board? A teeter-totter. Seesaw. Who, calls, who in their childhood called it a seesaw? Who called it a teeter-totter? Some people, did some people raise their hands twice? Yes, I did. Yes, they did. Okay. And so uh, I'm, I'm more of a teeter-totter person myself. <laughs> and, and I always had more, f I, I usually had more fun than the other person, usually because I was heavier than the other person uh, <laughs> that, that I was on a teeter-totter on. What SPU, what does SPU stand for? Selling Jackie? Per unit. Selling price per unit. So SPU stands for selling price per unit. Volume uh, should be some, somewhat self-explanatory. What is the mathematical relationship, Stephanie Harris, between these two concepts, selling price per unit and volume? Um. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Multiplication. Because selling price per unit, ah, we can do color since we have it, times volume. What's that equal? Selling price per unit times volume equals what? Catherine? This is supposed to be really, really easy. If you want to open your eyes, I've got a helpful hint on the board. Revenue, Revenue yes. Selling price per unit times volume equals revenue. And so here we've, you, and notice we've got a teeter, a bit of a teeter-totter effect going on here because has anybody here studied economics? Who here is, let me see, because I'm thinking it was a prereq for kind of getting into the College of Business. To be able, have you studied economics, Mr. I'm cold inside? Okay, you didn't raise your hand though, did you? Okay, it was just, just checking. Um, Matthew Hutchinson. You are among the, and, and I now know that uh, you are, uh, you've taken economics. So if, if we increase the selling price, what do we expect to have happen to volume? Go down. Oh, Brandon, Kanoi. Brandon, 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 Brandon. If we, what, what do we expect to have happen if we decrease the selling price? Volume's going to increase. Kind of see kind of a teeter-totter effect going on there? And so what do we want to do? We want it balanced. And do we want it balanced at a big location or a small location? I mean, Shar put this very eloquently, right? Lots. We want lots of revenue. And so we want to, we want to maximize revenue, do we not? We want maximize, we want it to balance at a, at a maximum kind of revenue point. Because clearly we can sell it for $5 a piece. You know, sell cars for $5 a piece. Are you going to sell many of them? A lot of them. Profitably? No. But we'll sell a lot. And so, so we want to get maximum revenue. We can also sell them for, you know, we can sell, I don't know, Ford F-150s for, you know, $500,000 a piece. Are we going to sell many of them? No, so we're not going to make a whole lot of money. So it's finding the in-between point. It's finding the in-between point. Okay. So Brett King, where are you? Brett, we not only need, we not, uh, as a business, we need to be not only concerned about revenues, but also expenses. expenses. Okay. And here we've got another teeter-totter. Okay. What do you think is going to be on this teeter-totter? Oh, Heidi should know. It's the same teeter-totter as the second, or the third day of class last semester. Do you remember the box? The box from the first day of classes, notes in here, that uh, we should have filled in? Box? Early pages. Early pages of notes. What page? Nine. Nine? Page nine. It's one of those two splits. Yes, of course. What, are the ends coming? what goes on the ends of the teeter-totter? Which, because because you're looking at the box, right? So what are the labels on the box? Page nine. Okay. Yes. So we've got variable fixed. variable fixed and product and period. We want one of those two splits. 
Do you recall which one? And Heidi took this class last semester. Or not this class, but she took the, the uh, prerequisite <laughs> class. She's not, not repeating this class. She took the prerequisite class in which I say the same thing. And it's on video, so you all can check that out and make sure that I do say the same thing. And in fact, you were videotaped last semester. This is, unfortunately, this is Heidi's second semester in a row of being on videotape. And so we, not only can we confirm that I taught this, but that she was there, maybe. Uh, I'm sorry, do you remember? I'm sorry, I'm giving you too much of a hard time. It's one of the two. Variable and fixed. She is really good today. <laughs> She's like on fire. Variable and fixed. You know, uh, variable fixed. Now, what is the mathematical relationship between these? Heidi, can you help me out with that? Addition to this, she doesn't want to. Cody, can you help her out? She, I've, I have picked on her far too much already today, and she wants the rest of the class to be very helpful. Cody, what's the mathematical relationship between variable and fixed cost? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Addition, is that what Katie says? Do you believe her? Yes. You? Okay. Katie was in that same class, and she should know too. And so, very good, thank you. It, it always warms my heart when students remember stuff that I've taught them before. Uh, so variable cost plus fixed cost equals total expenses, okay? Um, now, and the same sort of a story, we can tell the same sort of a story. Uh, variable cost, here in the United States, we ver companies will very often replace people with machines. That's actually this. Lower variable cost, higher, vari uh, ver higher fixed cost. But companies will sometimes go in the opposite direction. Harley-Davidson, at one po point in time in its history, bought this very expensive move inventory around the factory system, complete with big gestures and got rid of it and just made these wooden things on wheels with, lined with carpet and called that good. And so you can go the other direction as well, reduce fixed costs and increase variable costs. And again, we have this teeter-totter-like effect. And again, what do we want to have happen to expenses? Big or small? Small. And the word, the opposite of maximize is? Minimize. So we want to minimize expenses, maximize revenues. And what we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about CVP, also known as break even. And that's going to help us balance that teeter totter. Okay? Because we have to balance, because the, the thing that makes running a business hard is you've got to balance both teeter totters simultaneously. I mean, conceptually, they're almost stacked on top of one another. And let me make this clear. Uh, to me, it's kind of implicit here, but here we've got variable cost, right? What's the mathematical relationship between? Uh, let's calculate this number, shall we? Just to make it clear. Variable cost per unit times volume equals total variable costs. And so the same volume that we used here, we can use to calculate variable costs. And so there is a there's this volume tie-in between both revenues and expenses. 